It is March 12, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. A bank is one of the easiest businesses to run. All you have to do is collect money and not f things up. Unfortunately, the banker behind many high-profile tech startups did not follow this rule, and was shut down and seized by the FDIC on Friday. <sighs> we f***ed up. Now, people who work at startups that keep their cash at Silicon Valley Bank have been freaking out because they're worried that their paychecks might bounce or their cash-burning employers might collapse. But is that even realistic? Well, there's a lot to untangle here. First, if you're not already familiar with the situation, let me get you up to speed. Over the last decade, we lived through a tech boom that was even bigger than the dot-com bubble. Thanks to easy money and low interest rates from central banks, all you needed was the next big idea for a disruptive app to get an investment from a venture capital firm. All you need are some slides and PowerPoint about why Tinder for horses makes the world a better place, then some guy in a Patagonia vest gives you $10 million. You're a tech bro now and need to put that money somewhere, and who better than Silicon Valley Bank? Things were great for SVB when interest rates were low, and it became the 16th largest bank in the United States, with around $175 billion in customer deposits. To make a return on this cash, they invested in bonds and mortgage-backed securities, often with 10 or more years to maturity. The problem is that when interest rates go up, bond prices go down, and this led to a mismatch between assets and liabilities. When people got wind of this, it led to an old-fashioned run on the bank, where every Everybody started to panic and withdraw their money. The government, who insures deposits up to $250,000, stepped in quickly and shut down the bank to minimize their losses. Sounds pretty crazy, but who's actually going to lose money here? Well, if you have less than 250 k in this bank, then you lose nothing because that money is fully insured. However, most tech startups likely have more than that in the bank, and at least 85% of deposits were uninsured, and that money could end up getting a haircut. The situation is ongoing, and there's a few different things that could happen here. A bigger bank could swoop in and acquire SVB and guarantee all the deposits. If that doesn't work, maybe they'll create some legislation to rob money from the taxpayers to bail out these tech startups, just like they did with big banks in 2008. But if that doesn't work, the FDIC can just liquidate all of the assets of SVB, then pay out a future dividend to uninsured depositors. That's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. So at the end of the day, depositors will get most, if not all, of their money back. Shareholders, though, are pretty much screwed. They got bailed in and now face a total loss. Luckily, though, the bank's top executives were able to sell millions of dollars in stock over the last few weeks, so they'll be just fine. The most interesting thing about this situation, though, is the contagion. Contagion. Or what kind of economic shocks will this create for other businesses in Silicon Valley? USD coin, one of the top stable coins in crypto, depegged as a result because more than $3 billion of its cash reserves were exposed to SVB. This looks looks really bad for crypto because these stable coins are necessary to keep liquidity in the crypto markets. If it were to collapse entirely, there would be a ton of collateral damage. The collapse of Terra's UST last year was pretty bad, but the collapse of USDC would be far worse. When it comes to contagion, it makes you wonder if there are any other banks in a similar situation to SVB. It was uniquely exposed to tech startups, but the key problem here is rising interest rates, and there are likely other banks out there that made similar mistakes. But most importantly, how will this affect the average software engineer who works at a startup exposed to SVB? SVB. Many companies like Roku and Roblox have disclosed their exposure and should have no problem continuing their operations as normal. Then you have other smaller startups saying that they're not going to be able to meet their payroll. That sounds bad, but in reality, they'll likely be able to find some kind of temporary solution to continue operating as normal until the FDIC gets things figured out. Longer term, though, this is definitely bad news for the tech job market. Running out of money is never a good thing, especially in an industry where it's normal to burn through tons of cash until you get acquired or IPO. To make matters worse, inflation was worse than expected recently, which means the Fed's not going to be able to ease interest rates anytime soon. There's really only two possible outcomes. Interest rates stay high, and we enter the Great Depression 2.0, or interest rates go low, and the dollar hyperinflates into worthless toilet paper. In either case, it doesn't matter, because AI is going to replace all these tech jobs anyway, and that's why you should learn to mine as soon as possible. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.